A warm hello to all the bike and e-bike friends and passionate enthusiasts out there. Today, I'm at Eurobike in Frankfurt to check out the new and upcoming exciting and innovative products and highlights coming your way in the year 2025. So stay tuned to see what I am going to discover. I'll start with a manufacturer that made a big splash last year, namely Pinion, and I'll check out what new things they have for you to explore. Pinion is currently not showing any huge innovations at Eurobike 2024. Two small novelties. Firstly, a few new display solutions that can now be even better integrated into the frame, meaning a display unit, including a small display, that can be integrated into the top tube. And perhaps the biggest innovation is the so-called outshift technology, which in fact enables fully automatic shifting. This means you don't really have to worry about choosing the right gear anymore. You just set your favorite cadence, and the system calculates the perfect support for you. What's new with Pinion this year, or in connection with Pinion, are indeed several new manufacturers who are now also actually relying on the Pinion MGU. Let us take a closer look at these in detail now. Certainly one of the most renowned and well-known new manufacturers relying on the Pinion system with the MGU is Ries & Müller, the traditional and highly esteemed German e-bike manufacturer, a name many of you are surely familiar with. Ries & Müller is launching two new e-bikes, or previous models, but now equipped with the Pinion MGU onto the market. On one hand, there is the Delight, practically the flagship of city commuter trekking bikes, with full suspension, complete equipment, fully integrated shock absorber. And then there is also the Homage, the slightly more affordable trekking model, also with Pinion MGU or the Bosch CX motor. Here you have the choice. Both versions are available as e-bike versions as well as S-Pedelec versions. So here we also have now the option to use the Pinion MGU on an S-Pedelec. For many of you, this is certainly a wish and interesting for long distances. Another manufacturer, perhaps not quite as large but no less renowned that is now also relying on the Pinion MGU, is the high-quality manufacturer Nikolai, who are presenting their new Saturn 16 MGU Enduro EMTB fully here at Eurobike 2024. It comes with a solid 160mm Fox suspension system and, of course, as the name suggests, with the MGU. It now also includes the Gates belt drive and automatic gear shifting. This showcases the latest innovations from Pinion. So, a new true trail fund machine that is designed for tough use and built to handle the most difficult conditions with low maintenance while ensuring you can have a lot of fun with it. In terms of price, the Nikolai starts at 11,000 euros with the smaller battery and from 12,000 euros with the larger battery. A smaller battery in this case means 720 watt hours and the larger one even boasts 960 watt hours. So endless trail fun is definitely guaranteed. Not entirely brand new to the Pinion game, but still with two innovative and advanced new Pinion MGU models at Eurobike is Flyer. The Swiss are presenting a new crossover bike here, the GoRock TR, and behind me a new trekking e-bike, the Urban TRCF. So here we also now have models similar to those from Ries and Müller in the moderate range, not in the mountain bike category, which will certainly be an interesting option for many of you for city travel and countryside use, where we can definitely be on the move with low maintenance and now there are also more possibilities in the pinion area. A small special feature of the GoRock TR, the crossover model with a low step through and pinion drive, is that it doesn't have the more commonly found 12-speed pinion MGU, but rather only the 9-speed, which doesn't quite have the same gear range. The 12-speed with approximately 600% here we have around 560%, so slightly less, but completely sufficient for an e-bike. Of course, the gear ratio is not quite as refined, but nevertheless just as low maintenance, also with belt drive, and perhaps a great option for some of you. That's all for now on the topic of Pinion. Other new manufacturers that are also currently using Pinion include the company MyTech and Mustache, both of which are offering new models with the Pinion MGU motor in the market. If you want to know more, feel free to check out their websites. I'm going to check out what's happening at R. Raymond's booth right now because there's a brand new motor to admire here, which we want to take a closer look at in detail. R. Raymond is showcasing the Tarok at Eurobike, their first electric bike with the new ZF Centrix motor, which has already caused a bit of a stir ahead of Eurobike with its unique cola can design, as many have called it. It is relatively small when installed at the bottom bracket position, but with 90 newton meters of torque. The colleagues at ZF remain true to themselves even with a compact design, you get plenty of torque with the new Centrix motor. Visually, I must say, the motor looks very well integrated. The large 700 watt hour battery does bulk up quite a bit in the downtube though. We'll have to see for ourselves how it rides. 
Maybe I'll get a chance to take it for a little spin outside later. But first of all, a question to you. How do you like it? Could it be a real challenge for Bosch, Pinion, Shimano and others? Feel free to write your opinion in the comments. We are moving from newcomer to industry leader because no Eurobike video would be complete without Bosch e-bike systems. They are presenting several new features for their Bosch e-bike flow app at Eurobike. There are also some additional new payment features from the Flow Plus subscription that are now being added. Also very exciting indeed are the new eShift collaborations, including one with Shimano. So we can now also use Shimano Q's DI2 and Shimano Nexus DI2 hub gears in the Bosch universe. Additionally, the most exciting innovation for me in collaboration with TRP is that Bosch is now introducing, let's say, its own electronic shifting system, which allows for electronic and automatic shifting. This means that the chain ring continues to turn on its own and you don't really have to worry about shifting. I've already ridden it and it's a lot of fun. For me, it's an absolutely promising topic for the future. If you want to learn more about it, feel free to check out the corresponding video on our channel. The cargo bike specialists from Cargo, in collaboration with the renowned brake specialists from Magura, are bringing an innovative new braking system to Eurobike. It is called IBS, which stands for Integral Braking System. And the special thing about it is that it makes it possible to operate both the front and rear brakes with one brake lever. Cargo mentions that about 60% of the braking power, when I use the right rear brake lever for instance, is applied to the front brake and approximately 40% to the rear brake. This is why, theoretically, it would also be possible to operate a bicycle with a single brake lever. Legally, a second brake must indeed be installed. And what I find particularly exciting is that the whole system works purely hydraulically through this small box, which is integrated here by Magura, and thus the system can, or rather should, also be relatively easy to retrofit in a straightforward manner for those who are interested in that. What it specifically requires is the Magura CME 5 brake system, which is also used in the Bosch ABS system, offers a great feature to provide even more safety in road traffic, especially for cargo bikes, where the front brake is often not used, even though the braking capacity is much better there and it provides more safety for inexperienced riders. At Eurobike, the ergonomic specialists from SQ Lab are revolutionizing the saddle in a significant and innovative way. From now on, or with the innovative new clip-on systems, it is now possible that you no longer just buy a saddle, but you actually only buy the saddle frame. Depending on how you have measured yourself, you can then easily and conveniently clip on the appropriate clip-on cover. This way, you save the entire frame and can also adjust it relatively easily and conveniently. Perhaps also interesting for multiple users of an e-bike that you can basically swap the saddle and always have the perfect seat. There are options for this in both a slightly softer fabric and a more leather-like fabric. I think this is a great solution and maybe even offered as standard by the manufacturer. This way you can always find the right saddle for your bottom. Another highlight for me at this Eurobike, and not just for me but also for the Eurobike Awards jury, is definitely the further development or optimization of the Ortlieb Quick Rack. The popular modular luggage rack, which you can easily click in and out, is now available in two new variants. One in L and one in XL. These are needed because there is a new mounting method. The mechanism remains the same. However, there are now mounts for the through axle, which naturally means the mounting is slightly lower. That's why there are now the L and XL variants, which allow you to now mount the whole thing on the through axle. This has the significant advantage that in the XL version, you can even load up to 27 kilograms, and that's with complete certified approval for fully bikes. So this is really a very cool alternative if you want to mount a luggage rack on your fully suspended EMTB, which you can even quickly remove. Today at Eurobike, I briefly wandered into the startup area because I discovered the new brand Niche from Spain during my prior research. And you can already see it here behind me. Their motto is New Mindset. They want to completely rethink the e-bike concept and have integrated some really incredible features into their system. Currently, it is mainly a motor system with a control unit. And the special feature is that it basically connects two motors in the central motor housing. So one motor is responsible for the drive and the second motor is responsible for the transmission of the drive. They are completely mechanically independent and Niche says that this allows for an infinite range of possible gears. In addition, it is really exciting that we are able to harness energy from braking processes. So basically, through this electronic coupling, 
it is possible to return energy to the battery during braking. And as you might have guessed, recuperation could become possible here. And another feature, which I would now call new or innovative, is that the system has an adequate motor theft protection. This means that if the system is not switched on, the pedals cannot be moved at all. So Niche is going in a completely new direction. They are currently looking for brands and manufacturers that integrate the whole system, and maybe next year at the same place, we can test such a bike for you. The vehicle I am currently crouching in front of looks like an old sports car, is named like a sports car, but it is an e-bike. Specifically a tandem e-bike, which is also available in an S-Pedelec variant, and it has two actual seats. So yeah, it has a sports steering wheel, four wheels, four brakes, and that definitely looks like a lot of fun. Without a doubt, a real special highlight here at Eurobike, the unique Kinner Human Powered Sports Car. Let's move from one crazy incredible vehicle to the next. Behind me, you can see the Taran T Pro, the first cargo bike from the Chinese company Taran. I suspect they are not making a big leap into Europe yet. Nevertheless, they have installed many interesting features on this cargo bike that might even be somewhat futuristic or trend setting. Because the most noticeable thing from the outside, which was also introduced to me first, is of course the support wheel system that serves as a stand on one hand, but can also be unfolded during the ride. It works fully electrically and there are plenty of sensors, including position sensors and speed sensors, that calculate the exact position you are currently in with the bike. Especially when you are heavily loaded with items or equipment, the system can automatically activate and deploy support wheels to make riding much more comfortable for you. The colleague from Taran told me that the objective is to make riding a bike as comfortable as driving a car. In addition, there are a total of three cameras, one facing backward, one facing forward, and one in the cargo box. These cameras keep you informed about the traffic around you, and you can check whether your groceries are still in the right place in the cargo box. They also function as an anti-theft unit. So if someone unauthorized approaches your bike, it can also be recorded upon your request. Everything is possible, nothing is mandatory, I was assured. So you can also cover the cameras mechanically if you don't like it in this case. Otherwise, the whole thing works with two batteries and a Chinese motor. So for me personally, this looks more like a study of what might be possible in the future. And a futuristic design with integrated LED lights and turn indicators, a large touch display with navigation, speakers are also included, allowing you to play music. So. There are already a couple of features that are also new to me in the cargo area, and here everything just somehow comes together. I'm standing in the Frankfurt rain for you, which has just started in the outdoor area. Because we are here with a, you could say, regional manufacturer, Merwe Bikes from the state of Thuringia in central Germany, who are presenting a bike here that also managed to impress the expert jury of the Eurobike Awards. It is namely the Moor Avian Titanium Gravel Bike, a really light gravel bike. It currently weighs approximately around 10 kilos, and the special thing, as my colleague from Merwa just told me, is that the primary objective was simply to produce a lightweight e-bike that can compete with the carbon frames manufactured in the Far East in terms of stability and cost. And this was achieved by using very special adhesive techniques, which were used to bond the titanium tubes with a patented system. The titanium lugs were 3D printed, and in my honest opinion, not only does this bike look incredibly stylish, but it is also available at a very reasonable price of 7,490 euros. I think it will definitely be fun to use. Of course, for me, this is definitely a little highlight and maybe we'll do a bit more about it on our channel. So it's best to subscribe, this way you don't miss anything. Despite the rain, I still had the chance to get on the R Raymond bike with the ZF motor, which I talked about earlier, and take a short spin around the test track forecourt. I can already reveal that the acceleration is absolutely worthy of a full power motor. So a big compliment to the developers at ZF for being able to get the power out of the motor in such a compact housing. For me personally, a small downside is the noise level, which in terms of volume can certainly be compared to a Bosch or a Yamaha in the full power segment. In terms of frequency, I like it a little bit less, so it might take a while until you get used to that, but this is a fully with 160 millimeters of travel, so you should ideally use it in very rough terrain. Therefore, it's quite a bearable point for me. And what I didn't quite like is the issue of exceeding 25 kilometers per hour, or in particular, riding without assistance in flat terrain. I didn't like it that much, but it's definitely an interesting new player that might be relevant for many of you in the future when you buy your next bike. 
Maybe some of you have already tested a bike with the ZF motor. Please feel free to share your thoughts and opinions in the comments, and I will continue to explore what else there is to discover here at Eurobike. As you can see, the rain is unfortunately getting heavier here in Frankfurt, so it's high time for me to wrap up the long day here now. As a final point, I also tried the e-bike conversion kit from Scarba, a renowned British company that aims to offer a reliable solution for efficiently converting a regular bike into a fully functional electric bike. It works extremely cool. You just need to simply swap the brake disc, then just click in the retrofit kit, attach a small adapter to the chainstay, place a sensor on the crank, and you're good to go. I also took a small ride with it. In turbo mode, it almost felt a bit overpowered to me, so I liked it much better in eco mode. Please feel free to write your opinion about these retrofit kits in the comments and let us know if this might be an option for you. If you are interested in that, then we might make a separate video about it, or you can just check out our blog post where we've already written a little bit about it. And with that, this concludes our coverage from Eurobike for now. I am heading to a dry place to start editing the video. If you were at Eurobike yourselves, feel free to leave a comment about what your highlights were, which of my highlights you particularly liked, and if there were any topics which you did not like at all. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. And then I wish you a pleasant afternoon, evening or morning, depending on when you watch the video. Take care and goodbye.